All right, y'all, back for another one. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. I think I'm laughing because I'm freaking tired. And I don't know why I'm wearing this watch. It's been dead for like six hours, and I forgot to charge it. So we're gonna take that off. If it's not uh, if it's not charged, it's it just gets in the way. It just gets in the way. So I have rearranged the split to a six day split. The video I'm is actually processing right now. When you'll see I did a quad focus leg day and then I'm gonna do a hamstring focus leg day. I separated the chest and shoulders again. And um, we got the arm day the back and rear delts and then I threw in a core day because I've been saying I'm gonna hit core at the end of my workouts you know a couple times a week and I just don't so one dedicated core day gives the rest of my body a rest and ensures that I hit core and I have to say y'all when I was working out my core it's like I felt something but I wasn't sure if I was getting a good workout and I feel like my abs are gonna rip apart. I'm so sore. It was the day before yesterday. And yesterday I was, I was sore, but today it's like excruciating. Every time I sneeze, cough, like it definitely, whatever I did definitely worked. But uh, today is a chest day. And it's like, since starting, you know, this no days off routine, I'm never not sore. I feel like some people's bodies adapt to lactic acid. And at some point in their training age, they stop getting sore. I'm sore like all the time. <laughs> I've never adapted to it. So my, for some reason, my triceps are a little sore. My chest really isn't sore at all. But my tries are a little sore, and that's obviously, you know, one of the components to push. So we'll see how it goes. I'm also dog shit tired. Like my, um, I was sitting on the couch uploading my YouTube videos. I'm doing, I'm posting a full day of eating, as you know, full day of eating vlog, and I'm posting these styles, the Sulik style gym videos. Not trying to be Sam. Not trying to blow up on social media. I'm just doing it to hold myself accountable and document my lifts and um, track my progress. It's basically it. I've never been as consistent as I have since I started these videos. So I'm not going to stop because this is, I feel like this is really one of the keys. If I wasn't making these videos, I feel like I could easily say, you know what? No one sees what I'm doing. I can just skip today. But if even one, other, if even one of y'all is watching consistently, if I don't post a video, y'all know I skipped. So this is keeping me, this is keeping me going. And every time I, you know, like even today, I've, I've, there's been several days where I'm just so freaking tired. I definitely don't want to do this. And every time I do it. I'm happy that I did it. So I'm trying to reinforce this behavior. But chest day, separating chest all by its lonesome, that's going to make for a short and simple workout. Not easy. Is this focused? Yeah. Not easy, but simple and quick, relatively. But like yesterday, I told my girlfriend, I was like, I'm doing quad focused workout. So I was like, it's not going to be long at all. I think I was at the gym for like two hours. So <laughs> it didn't pan out the way I wanted. Oh, also I got in my truck and it says low fuel. Like there's a point where it'll say like 25 miles left to empty, but now it just says low. So I don't know how low it is because I don't remember when it started saying that, but the gym's pretty close. So I'm just going to risk it. We're not going to stop for gas. But uh, yeah, chest only, I mean really, as I was saying in yesterday's video, 
you need about the equivalent of a set per day. So if I'm working out chest once every six days, I would need six sets today for optimum hypertrophy, provided I'm bringing the intensity, which I will be. So that could look like two exercises, three sets each, or three exercises, two sets each. Pretty quick workout. But I'm probably going to do more than six sets just because. I'll probably do nine sets. I'll probably do three exercises, three sets apiece three working sets so obviously you're gonna start with bench bench I do not believe to be the best movement for hypertrophy and it's flat bench you know I know everyone says focus on incline build your upper chest but my upper chest I think is in better condition than my lower chest so I just do flat it's just a I don't need to emphasize upper chest but also I like to be strong and I'm pretty sure everyone's stronger on flat bench than they are on incline. So I like flat bench. Also, at one point, was thinking about doing power lifting. And you don't incline bench in power lifting, you flat bench. So I got real accustomed to doing flat. So starting with flat bench while I'm the strongest, probably going to work up to 315 and try to do a couple working sets. I never do more than a couple working sets. Then. We'll probably do an incline. I don't know if I'll do a machine or if I'll do dumbbells. I might do dumbbells today. But I don't do Smith. Not because I think Smith machine's bad, but because my body doesn't agree with Smith. I said this in some of the previous videos. It's something about it being on a fixed track. It's like I always tweak my shoulder on the Smith machine. And like my collarbone injury, I remember one time, this was free weight uh, barbell incline. It wasn't Smith machine. But one time, um, my buddy, he prefers incline. So he said, man, I don't want a flat bench, I want an incline. I said, okay, we can, we can incline bench. And just the fact, like incline dumbbells never bother me because I can kind of turn my wrist at a 45 and I can... I can manipulate the two sides to even it out. But the barbell locking me in to a fixed pattern with my shoulders more uh, pronated, I guess, or in flexion, I like instantly, I think I was doing like, I still move a lot of weight on incline. I was probably doing like 275. But yeah, I mean, I hurt my shoulder. Not because it was hard, but just because Something about a barbell and incline with me just doesn't mix. And when you put it on a Smith machine, it's even worse. Because the free weight barbell, at least I have a little bit of variability. Like, you know, like whatever is different on this side from my injury, whatever I tweaked, at least I can somewhat adjust in some plane of motion. But with the Smith where you have to do it so freaking rigid that's asking for trouble so we we'll start with bench flat bench we're gonna go to I kind of want to do dumbbells because they have the 150 pound dumbbells and um, I'd like to play around with those but I'm gonna do the barbell now that I'm talking about it I don't know but I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna do barbell then we'll do incline dumbbell press this is the this is the rough sketch for tonight um, and then we'll do the pec deck machine I did, I, the only one I saw last time was like this lying one and the resistance curve was awful. And so I ended up doing some like low cables, but I saw the other day that they have just the, the, the one that where you sit up. And that's one of the greatest, for me personally, it's one of the greatest chest exercises ever. I've never felt such a squeeze on my chest as doing just the standard pec deck where you're just sitting straight up. So that's the plan, those three exercises, three working sets of each, and then we're going to get the fuck out of here. Um, yeah, not much more to talk about, so let's go work out. All right, so I was just uh, telling somebody that I might not record every set because these videos are kind of long, but I started off recording every set. However, my camera settings were wrong and I had it in 30 frames per second, so I went to watch the video back and it was like, 
it looked almost like a time lapse. So those sets aren't going to be in the video. So we're just going to get right into the working sets. And uh, that's all I'm going to record from now on, I think, is the working sets. So we did 225 for about six. Then we did 275 for two. And now we're at 315, our working set. Trying to um, waste the least amount of energy as we warm up for an actual working set. So that's the goal. I feel like this is kind of overexposed. Let me, uh, let me do that. That might be better. All right. Whoop. Last time I did this for eight, but my legs and my abs are so sore that my, my actual drive, like my leg drive is kind of not how it should be. So we'll see what we get here. We tried seven and a half all right so I am um, I'm um, taking the ego out of the equation here I typically don't like to bench less than three plates and uh, typically I can but I watched that setback and maybe I wasn't watching it close but I don't know if I got six and a half or seven and a half but either way it wasn't eight and I'm looking for eight so I went down to 305 and I don't even know what I'll get with 305 because now I'm pretty fatigued from the last set, but had to had to bite the bullet and take three plates off. Which, you know, you should get weaker during a cut. <laughs> it's normal. It's just last time I felt great. I just didn't have my chalk. So my hands were slipping on the bar and I felt like I could have got nine if I had my chalk. But today my abs are sore, my legs are sore. And I'm making a bunch of excuses. But I'll probably be, do two more sets here. I'm gonna take another five off of each side and do another. All right, last set. It's gonna be a quick ass workout, to be honest, because I'm already done with the first movement. I only have two other movements. <laughs> it's kind of nice. Because if there's one thing I like more than working out, it's being at home with my girl. And this has been taking away from that, but it also brings me a lot of satisfaction as well. So I just wish I had, I basically wish I didn't have to sleep. I had more hours in the day because I don't want to sacrifice either one. I want to be able to do it all. So I won't lie, I'm feeling uh, my right elbow is kind of, I don't know, every now and then it gets some kind of weird little throb. I do feel like I should be doing a machine. They have an excellent uh, incline press made by Prime and the handles come together so you get a great contraction. 
and it takes a lot of the st stabilization out so it's easier so I can load more weight through the actual muscles I'm using I also wouldn't have to walk the dumbbells all the way over here because the dumbbells are kind of a little ways away but I feel like doing dumbbells for some reason so I'm gonna do dumbbells we'll see how this goes so we got the hundreds um, typically incline dumbbell is the second movement I never start incline dumbbell fresh and the most I've done is like 130s for eight this is only 100s but I think the volume and the frequency of these workouts is kind of catching up to me and uh, as I said my core is kind of sore my legs are sore I mean not my core is not kind of sore it's very sore um, so I feel like that's affecting the movements but Either way, we're going to get it done. We might decrease the weight, but the intensity will be the same. That wasn't too bad. Not too bad. I'm uh, at least, uh, where am I here? At least carrying the dumbbells is kind of like a little bit of a farmer's carry. So we're getting a little work there. But I might uh, I might just do one more set here with the hundreds again. I think I can get at least eight on the next set or around eight. And then I might move to that machine that I said I should have done to begin with. So do two sets here, do two sets on the incline machine and then finish off with, uh, that would be seven, I don't know, two or three sets on the, on the pec deck. So I'll be in the nine to 10 set range. <clears throat> Nine's not bad. I'm usually not good at replicating sets, so I'm pretty impressed with that. All right, so this is the very machine I was talking about. Felt pretty good last time I used it. The, the cushions are so soft. It's extremely comfortable. I guess the right weight too. I didn't want to do a warm up because I'm already warmed up. So we'll do one more here. All right, one more set on here. I, I think maybe I should go down in weight because I got like, I got eight solid reps the first time and then like a half a rep and then a quarter rep. Um, But I want to make sure I can get eight good reps, but I'm not going to go down because I don't know. <laughs> I'm just not going to do it. And also, like, I'm a lot weaker today than normal. Uh, but there's so many variables that affect that. So I don't really let it get to me, you know. Next time I come in, I might be super strong. <laughs> Who knows? I just, I go as hard as I can with the amount of weight I can do on any given day. All right. Come <laughs> on. 
I think I did one extra rep that time. So I don't know what's going on. But that's it right here. Let's do the peg deck and get the fuck out of here. All right, our last movement of the peck deck. Now, what's cool about this gym is there's only one of these, right? And I'm not sure how I'm gonna like it because these handles turn and that might be a disadvantage here. When the handles are stiff, it's like your wrists, you know, they have just better stability. We'll see. But the good thing about this gym is it's, it's never packed. Because if there was like 30 people here, this would probably be taken. But there's maybe like eight people here, and this is a busy night. Yeah, I don't like that the handles move, but it's still such a great contraction. Like, I don't know what the science says, but I mean, obviously you can put out more force on like a press, uh, which is probably more mechanical tension, but just the overall contraction of this machine is like the best thing I've ever felt for chest. When the handles are, I wish you could lock them. I wish you could have them locked or moving depending on your preference, but I don't design equipment. Overall, it's getting the job done. Way better than that, that lying one over there. All right, so another thing is this machine, like the weight stack is totally different than the one at Red's. Because the one at Red's I could max out, and I think I was getting more than eight reps. But this one, I had it on 200, it goes to 300. I think I just got like 10 and some change I don't know, I have to watch it back. I know I got at least eight. But I actually lowered it two notches to 160. And I'm just gonna go a little slower and focus on the contraction because that's the thing I like most about this machine is the contraction. Um, and also because like I have a really solid pump right now, I can feel it. So, and I've done what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've done eight sets already. So I might do two more sets. So that'd be 10 sets total. And I'd plan to do like eight or nine. So we'll see. <clears throat> I don't like to do too many partials. It's just at some point it doesn't feel like it's doing anything. Like to me, this movement, the stretch feels great. And then the concentric feels good about here when I'm getting the most contraction. And like, I don't know, when I'm, when I'm in this range, it's like I feel like I'm just like probably tearing up my joints or something for no reason. So. I'm not going to do too many. The first set I tried to do some because I was trying to get more reps, but now that I'm kind of over that, I'm doing lighter weight, slower, more controlled. If I'm not getting the full contraction, I don't want it. All right, last set. And I didn't even check the time, but this did not take long. And I also, um, I'm only shooting with one camera tonight which makes the editing super easy. Like all I got to do is bring these clips in the final cut and basically export them. So it doesn't take any time. When I do it with two cameras, it takes like four times as long because I got to match up all the, uh, the audios of both clips. And then I got to pick like what parts of what set I want on each camera to show and the setup of the two cameras and everything. It takes a lot longer. <laughs> so I went the easy route today, but 
I'm still getting a video out, still doing daily content, which a lot of people aren't doing. A lot of full-time influencers aren't doing daily content. Another thing before we do this is, uh, I tend to like put my butt a little bit forward and the seat high and I squeeze the lower chest. I'm focusing on the lower chest here. Right. That's my, that's my like, I guess mental um, cue is the lower pecs. All right. It's crazy to say we're done. <laughs> that didn't feel like much, but I honestly, I got my, I got my intervals, intervals wrong the other day on my leg day when I was calculating the frequencies and stuff. So I'm gonna have to like write it down. Uh, I probably won't write it down, <laughs> but I said you'd need about one set every day, the equivalent. So if you're hitting something every six days, do six sets each, each session. And that's what I'm doing. I'm hitting everything every six days. So really all my chest needed scientifically was six sets and I did 10, which is almost double. So should be plenty of volume. It really should. All right. Let me turn this down a little bit. I realized that I don't like to underexpose too much because in post-production editing, if you're overexposed and you bring the exposure down, it looks good. But if you're underexposed and you bring it up, it doesn't look good. So it's better to overexpose than underexpose. talk to y'all without the mic I find that I am underexposing my footage I'm underexposing my footage because the lighting's so bad in here that I'm trying to get I'm like attempting to get shadows and lines to be a proper influencer <laughs> but I'm not getting them it's just getting underexposed because the lighting comes from every angle and the walls are white so there's literally no shadows here <laughs> But I am getting a lot leaner. It's crazy because my arms and my legs is just skin. Like my arms and legs are so lean, but my midsection and my love handles have like grabbable fat. So I wish my arms and my legs stored just a little bit of fat. <laughs> and took it away from my midsection. Cause if, uh, if like, let's say, if 10 pounds of my fat was distributed in my arms and my legs and away from my midsection, I would be happy. I would stop the cut right now. But it's like all my stubborn fat's right here. So I have to keep cutting because I'm not satisfied yet. But yeah, if this was just dispersed elsewhere, I would, I would be really happy. I don't know. I do know that uh, like the last couple of years I've been getting, I've been developing this side chest. I feel like for a while, like my nipples are far on the outside of my chest. And I feel like I didn't have this for a while. It just kind of like, they almost coned outwards cause I have like pubertal gyno. I've had it since I was like 11 years old. Um, but the last couple of years I've really developed a good side, like the side of my pec and it's a lot more pleasing to look at. So, whatever I'm doing is working. But yeah, all I know is like side chest, 
Like I said, there's no shadows, so you can't really... You can't see the striations or anything in this lighting. <sighs> One more like this. This will be good for the thumbnail. <sighs> All right, that's it. We're done. Um, <laughs> let's go to the truck. All right, y'all, so I would be lying if I told you how long that took, but I'm pretty sure this is gonna be the shortest workout video yet, even shorter than core, which is surprising. But I definitely got 100% of a pump, so um, no problems here. I definitely got the work done. Is this an exit right here? Wow, it is. I've literally been, there's an exit right by where I've been parking. And I've literally been driving all the way around. Ooh, the police. Oh, the po po. All right. <coughs> yeah, I mean, you can, can you see the chest pump still in the car? A little side chest? I feel like I definitely got a solid pump. I mean, as pumped as I could ever be. And like I said, in theory, from a scientific standpoint, I actually did more volume than I even need. And it felt like too little volume. So maybe I've been, uh, I don't know. I say overtraining, but I feel like I've never trained with this intensity. So even though the volume's lower, I think I'm getting more out of it than I ever have. And if one thing, I notice in the gym is there's not a lot of people that train with intensity like when I look around the gym it almost seems like most people are training from a physical therapy standpoint and like everyone has you know different goals not everyone's trying to be or trying I'm not trying to be like a mass monster or anything I'm not trying to get as big as possible I'm trying to have decent muscle mass and some aesthetic you know, quality to my physique, but and I don't want to be, you know, somewhat strong. But uh, yeah, most people, I know some people think it's all about the mind muscle connection. Uh, yeah, the mind muscle connection and slow and in control reps. Um, <coughs> but a lot of people in the gym, man, it just seems like they're going through the motions. And I, I can't really remember. I'm sure I've, I was there at some point too. I mean, just now, like since I started this series, it's probably the most intense I've ever trained, for sure. I've had brutal days because of the volume, but I've never had days so brutal because I'm just like really freaking, you know, taking myself to the brink of death from the intensity. But yeah, I look around and, you know, people are on the tricep press and they're like, you know, it's, it's just... It doesn't look intense at all. Just whatever they're doing, it seems like they're just going through the motions, you know? But hey, to each their own. To each their own. Um, good lift, solid lift. I did not like how the bench press went, but I was weak all around. I was weak all around. I was weak on the incline dumbbells. It is what it is. Right before I left the house, I was falling asleep to the point where like I couldn't keep my eyes open. Like I was sitting on the couch, I was I wanted to make sure my videos were uploaded and were processing. So like I was waiting for them to say processing. <coughs> and um like my, my eyelids were falling and I was like pulling I was like catching my head falling. And I took my pre workout and obviously that woke me up, but it didn't get me amped like I was yesterday. Yesterday I was kind of amped to the point of anxiety. Today I was like I'm awake, but just barely. So there's a lot of variables that affect your lift. You can't get too um, too tied to you know each session. Just go as hard as you can with what you can do, and you should get a pretty decent result. That's that's my two cents. Now, as far as the diet is concerned, we hit an all-time low weight today on the cut, 211.2. I'm 5'10 for reference, 
because a lot of people are like, how tall are you? I mean, not on here, but on TikTok, they used to always ask me, how tall are you? So, yeah, I, um, 211.2, all-time low. And the strategy that I've employed is working, working. I couldn't even stay consistent on the cut. I've almost been in like a perma bulk for the last two years because I've, I've decided I'm going to cut and then I do it for like three weeks or two weeks and then I go right back into a full-on bulk because I just can't can't uh, stay consistent. But we're, we're consistent right now, partially because of these videos, but also because of my strategy, which is to focus on protein, like focus on getting as close to my protein goal as possible and as little calories during the day as possible. And it's delayed, it's delayed gratification. Now that I'm thinking about it, that's exactly what it is. I tell myself, I mean, the food I'm eating is good. The proats that I eat in the morning, like the last two days I haven't even eaten that. I've just skipped breakfast. But the proats in the morning are delicious. They're filling. They keep me going until lunchtime. The baked chicken is really well seasoned, really juicy. I love chicken. And the pizza is fire, you know. That protein cookie I had the other day. I'm eating tasty foods, rice and gravy, all this stuff. But I guess during the day I tell myself, like, just focus on the protein, keeping the calories low. And later tonight, if you want to treat yourself, you can. And sometimes, when we get to the end of the night, I do want to treat myself. The other day I had a Caniac combo. And guess what? It didn't affect the cut at all because I was still in my caloric deficit. I still hit my protein goal because of how I set myself up earlier in the day. And it was delicious. I have <coughs> no regrets. Um, today I'm actually in the same exact spot. I could eat a Caniac combo. I would still be in a caloric deficit. I would have like 290 grams of protein. So I'd be way over my protein goal. And everything would be fine. I could do that. And I might do that. We don't know. I haven't decided yet. I have food in the fridge I can eat, but I might go to Cane's. But at the same time, if I don't and I eat healthier at home, I could be in, a, in an even larger deficit. And like I said before, you're looking at like a weekly caloric allowance. So if your goal for the day to be in a deficit is like mine, it's 3,200. And for five days in a row, you eat 2,200, let's just say. That's 5,000 calories extra of a deficit you're in. So on Saturday, let's say you blow it out and eat 8,000 calories. It doesn't matter because total calorie-wise, you're still in your deficit. Does that make sense? It should. It's very simple. Very simple math, because it's all calories in, calories out. But yeah, isn't that crazy? Like, if you wanted to do, if you if you were making content and you wanted like viral content, you could be in a really steep deficit for six days of the week, and then on Sunday you could do a ten thousand calorie day, because I know those ten thousand calorie day videos do well. And uh, I don't want to go that extreme, but every now and then I. I uh, go off the beaten path a little bit. I might be going to Ruth's Chris on Sunday. And if I go there, I mean, I'm obviously not tracking calories. And I'm obviously eating everything in sight. So, all I really have to do, and even if you eat everything in sight, <laughs> it's hard to, to really blow it out. Like a Caniac combo is 1,780 calories. That's a lot of food. It's 90 grams of protein. But I do double toast. I get rid of the slaw. Six chicken tenders. 400 calories almost. It's 380 calories of sauce alone. They give you extra fries. You just get a diet soda. It's zero calories. And it's right. I think with the toast in place of the slaw, it's like 1820 calories. It's 40 more calories. So that huge plate of food, even that can't get you far out of a deficit. And like I said, the way I set it up, I'll still be in a deficit if I eat that. My girlfriend loves Cane's. So if I say, let's go to Cane's, we're going. I haven't decided. I'm about to walk in. And I'm, gonna, I'm thinking about what I'm going to do. But you'll see it in the full day of eating uh, vlog. Because that's also something I'm shooting today. So I post these. 
and I post a different like kind of day in the life eating vlog if you actually want to see what I'm eating. Uh, so there's two videos being posted every day. But that's it for this one. Um, I'll see y'all in the next video.